I'm Jolene Wynn, and this is the Porn Addict's Wife podcast, episode number 223, Belief Action. If your husband is struggling with a pornography problem and you want some help with it and you are not finding the resources that you like, you are in the right place. My name is Jolene Wynn. I am a certified life coach. I am an active member of the LDS faith, and I am the wife of a former porn addict. And on this podcast, I am going to share with you the tools that you need in order to start your healing journey. This is where I'm going to show you how to dive deep into intentional living, how to rekindle connection with your spouse, how to manage all that emotional turmoil that you're feeling, how to break the addiction cycle that you have to your husband's addiction, and tell you all of the ways to do that and start healing. I am so glad that you're here and I can't wait to get started. Let's go. Hello, my ladies. How are you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. How was your weekend? I hope it was amazing. It's actually Labor Day weekend, so I hope you guys have some great things planned. I hope it's nice weather and you get to have a barbecue. We're having a pool party at my sister's house, which is great. And everything is so fun. Everything, how are you guys doing with your back to school, getting back in the swing of things? I know it can be rough. It can be so full and so draining and yet also a little bit nice, right? When people go back to school, it's nice. That's what I've heard anyway. My kids are home with me. We homeschool. So we've just been doing school all summer. So it's exactly the same. But I know that this can be a busy time of year, but I actually love this time of year. I feel like it's kind of almost like the new year. I feel like it's a fresh start because every schedule, every like the schedules are all changing. And so it's kind of a nice way to kind of reset. And so if you're struggling with that, if you're feeling overwhelmed, then I want to offer that, that I, instead of taking a look at this as like all the things that you have to do, I want to offer it as kind of an, a reset. So a reframe of now you get to decide all over again, what is it that I'm going to spend my time on? How am I going to structure my days and really use this as an opportunity to say, how do I want to spend my time? What do I want to focus on? What do I intentionally want to put into my life in the next couple of months? So I love this time of year. And that's what I want to offer for you is that rather than stressing out, (laughs) sitting in overwhelm, really take this time to reevaluate and say, oh, great. What do I want to let go of? And what do I want to keep? Because the truth is, ladies, that everything that you have in your life is entirely optional. You get to decide what it is that you keep and what it is that you don't. If you don't want your kids in activities, you can take it off. Did you know this? You don't have to do that. <laughs> My husband and I, none of our kids are in activities this year, at least for this fall. We, there's nobody in soccer. There's nobody in gymnastics. All of the activities that they were in last year were taking a break. Did you guys know you could do this? You're allowed. And it's fantastic. And if you want to do that, you can. Everything is optional. So take a look, make a list. What do I want to keep? What do I not? And then create it. I'm so excited for you. Okay. Ladies, I do want to tell you guys about a free call that I'm doing. It is on September 12th because I didn't want to do it on September 11th because September 11th is my day that's reserved for honoring September 11th. So it's on September 12th, Thursday, September 12th. So next Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, I'm going live. I'm going to do a live class. I would love for you guys to come. So in this class, I'm going to teach you how to break free from your husband's pornography problem. What I'm going to teach in this class specifically is I'm going to go over the three main lies that are being perpetuated in our society, especially within the betrayal trauma community that are actually keeping you stuck. And so if you are feeling like you're not getting any traction in your healing and moving forward, if you are curious about what these are, then come to this call live. I will put the link in the show notes so that you guys can just go ahead and register. But again, it's Thursday, September 12th at 1 p.m. Eastern. And I would love for you guys to come live so that I can work with you one-on-one. If you've never been to a live call with me, I work very much with you love one-on-one. It's a very interactive call. And I want you to bring wherever you're stuck or struggling so that I can help you move forward forward and move past it. That's the whole point. So come to this call. Again, I'll put the link in the show notes so that you guys can join. Mark it on your calendar and I would love to see you there. Okay. Second thing, ladies, come to my retreat. I want to hang out with you. What are you guys doing? 
let's hang out. I'm free October 17th to the 20th. If that works for you in your schedule, I would love to see you at the beach in North Carolina. I am doing a three day in-person deep dive retreat. It is my favorite weekend of the year. And here's the truth. I actually don't like retreats. I'll be honest. I'm going on one with my coach in a couple of weeks and I have mentally talked myself out of it so many times because I'm an introvert. I don't love going and meeting new people. I don't love going to places. Look, I know that it sounds like I'm not selling you on my retreat, but I promise. <laughs> Here's the, th the crazy thing is even though I don't like retreats, I love mine. <laughs> it is my favorite because I get to spend it with all of you. And here's what's fun about my retreat is that everybody has something in common already. And so you go and you immediately feel welcome. You immediately feel completely loved and understood. And that is the power of the community of these women. And then everyone is there for whatever reason they came for. And they're all there to progress and move forward. It is the most uplifting, powerful experience. And I would love to see you there. I will put the link in the show notes. I only have a limited number of spaces. This is a very limited, exclusive retreat that I keep intimate on purpose so that I can spend the maximum one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one time with every single woman that comes. It is a third of the spots are already sold out. So if you know you want to come, click the link and sign up today so that you don't miss out. Every single year I do this, I get emails afterward asking me if I'm going to do it again because everybody wants to come and it always sells out. So make sure that you get your spot in ASAP. Okay. All right, ladies, let's dive in. Today I want to talk about belief action. This is something that I have felt particularly inspired to talk about. It is something that I have been working through a lot. And I want to explain this to you, that this is the way that you create the life of your dreams. This is the way that you actually create the life that you want to live. Here's the truth. Our actions that we take are from the feelings that we feel, right? If we think about the model, the self-coaching model, I talk about this all the time, our thoughts are what create our feelings and our feelings are super important because our feelings are what drive all of our action. The things that we do and the things that we don't do are all based on how we feel at the time or how we think we will feel if we do or don't do that thing, right? If I decide to get up and go to the gym, right, and based on a feeling, that I have felt. If I don't feel like going to the gym, then I'm not gonna go to the gym, right? If I think that asking my husband about his pornography use and whether or not he slipped isn't gonna make me feel better, then I'm probably gonna ask him, right? If I think that it won't, if I feel hesitant, then I'm not going to ask him, right? Every action that we take is based off of a feeling that we feel. Now, our feelings, are created from our thoughts. Our thoughts are what create our emotions. Our emotions are what drive our actions. It's very, very important that we understand the flow of this because what happens is we often get stuck thinking that the life that we have is because of something outside of our control. I have the life that I have because my husband's addicted to porn. I have the body that I have because of the weight issues that I've struggled with since I was a kid or the physical diagnosis or handicap that I have. I have the relationship with my mom that I have because she doesn't call me as often as I want her to, right? We think that the status quo of our life, the results that we have in our life are based on things that are outside of our control. And ladies, here's what I want to offer. I want to offer that that's not True. I want to offer that you reevaluate and you take a moment and you take a look at this because the truth is, is that the results that we have in our life are created by the actions that we take. Okay. If I get up and I go to the gym consistently, I'm going to have a very different result than if I don't. If I withdraw from my husband and I self isolate, then I'm going to have a very different relationship with him than if I did the opposite. Right? So I want you to start asking yourself, what is it that I am doing in my life that is creating the results that I have? And I promise you ladies, one of the biggest things that happens is that we are creating our life based on our disbelief. Here's what I mean by that. When I don't believe that it's possible for me to lose weight, 
then I am going to act in a way that reflects that. I am going to not work out. I am going to not be as careful with what that with what I'm eating. I am going to think more negatively about myself. And when I think those thoughts, when I think in that pattern, I'm not going to feel a way that's going to make me want to go put the effort in if I don't believe that putting in the effort is going to produce the result that I'm looking for. Does this make sense? So I want you to notice that the actions that we take in our life that come from a disbelief are going to produce evidence that further proves the disbelief. Okay, going back to that weight loss example. If I believe that if I don't believe it's possible for me to lose weight, okay, I'm acting from disbelief. My thought is it's not possible for me to lose weight. Then anything that I try won't work because I'm going to prove that. Either I will quit too early or I won't even try. I won't even begin because I'll say, hey, it doesn't even matter if I begin. I might as well not even try because everything that I've tried in the past has proven to me that it doesn't matter how much effort I put in, it's not gonna produce the result that I'm looking for, so I might as well not even start. And that just proves to my brain even harder that I can't lose weight. I am acting from disbelief or inacting right? Inaction is also an action. We think it's not. We think that action is all the doing. Inaction is also an action. Inaction, the, the, the unwillingness to take steps forward, the hesitancy that we have. When we don't take steps forward, that is also an action. That is also something we are doing. Not doing something is also doing it, okay? We are not doing the thing that we need to do in order to create the result because we don't even believe that result is possible, okay? Which is very different than if I take action from belief. And that's what I wanna to offer to you guys today. That's what I really want to encourage you guys to start doing. And it's super scary, which is the reason why we don't normally do it. But acting from belief looks like this. What if it's possible? What if it's possible for my body to lose weight? If I even just entertain the possibility of it being true, then I'm going to feel a certain way. More positively, I'm gonna feel motivated, I'm gonna feel inspired, I'm going to at least feel hopeful. And if I at least feel hopeful, then the actions that I take from hopeful are very different than the actions that I would take from, let's say, depressed or disenchanted or disbelief, right? So if I'm hopeful that I can lose weight, then maybe I'll go to the gym more and maybe I will track what I'm eating and maybe I will pay more attention to how many steps I take in a day and I will try to move my body more. And the more that I do that, those actions that I take from belief, those belief actions compound to create a very different result than all of the actions that I do or do not take from disbelief. And the actions that I take from belief are actually gonna be the result that I'm looking for in my life. Does this make sense? Are you guys with me? <laughs> Let's do another example, okay? An action from disbelief would be if I don't believe that I can trust my husband, okay? So there's a disbelief there. I don't believe I can trust my husband, okay? If that's my belief, the actions that I take from that disbelief are going to be second guessing, they're going to be doubtful. I'm gonna be doubting him. I'm going to be withdrawing and self-isolating from him. I'm not gonna be open and honest and vulnerable because I will feel afraid and hesitant and wanna keep a space between us. And that's not going to create the result that I want in my marriage. It's not gonna create a relationship with my spouse that I'm actually looking for. Now let's contrast that to if I took action from belief. Let's just suspend reality for a second and pretend like it was possible for you to trust your husband, okay? If you act from the belief that you can, or at least from the possibility that you can, the hope that you can, then you're going to show up differently, okay? You're going to take a second, you're gonna pause between the judgment where you automatically think that he's lying. You're going to act in a way that shows up more vulnerable. You're going to believe him, or at least try to believe him, when he says things to you. And that creates more connection. That fosters more of a, an intimacy, an emotional intimacy in your relationship. And that's what actually creates the closeness and the marriage and the relationship that you're looking for with your spouse. Ladies, you will get so much closer. In fact, the only way 
to create the life that you want is by acting from belief. And most of us don't have the life that we want because we spend too much time creating a life acting from disbelief, acting from the disbelief that it's possible that we can lose weight, the disbelief that it's possible that our life can look any different than it does right now, the disbelief that it's possible for us to heal. That's what we know. That's what we're comfortable with. That's what our brain wants us to stay in because it's familiar. And acting from belief is scary. Acting from belief says, I'm willing to go out on a limb here even though I have no evidence. Our brain has a disbelief because of past evidence. And ladies, your past is irrelevant. It doesn't matter what's happened in the past. It doesn't matter if you've failed 10 out of the last 10 times that you've tried to lose weight or heal or move forward or trust your husband. It's irrelevant. What is relevant is how you choose to go forward next. And the only way that it's going to be different than how it's been is if you start acting from belief rather than disbelief. That is how you change your life. You start taking brave, courageous action from the belief that it can happen, that it's possible for you to lose weight, that it's possible for you to trust your husband, that it's possible for you to heal, the belief that you're capable of achieving whatever it is that you want to do, that thing that you've always wanted to do that you haven't done, the the book you've wanted to write, the degree you've wanted to get, the business you've wanted to start, whatever it is. That thing that you've wanted to achieve is absolutely possible for you. But so far, the reason that it hasn't come to pass is because you've been acting from disbelief. Acting from the disbelief that you can do it. The disbelief that it's possible for you while you have so many little kids or while you, your husband is working so much or while because your kids are so little or because you don't have enough money or time or energy or whatever it is. That is all the action you're taking from disbelief. Ladies, your life will change the moment that you start taking action from belief. So today I want you to ask yourself, what is it that I want to believe about myself and about my life? Do I want to believe that it's possible for me to heal? And if so, if I believed that for a second, what would I do? And then go do it. Ladies, this is the most crucial part. If I believed that it were possible for me to lose weight, what would I do? And then go do it. If I believed it were possible for me to heal, what would I do? And then go do it. If I believed it were possible for me to change my marriage, to change my relationship with myself, to change my relationship with my kids, to change my relationship with God, if I believed that it were possible for me to do it, what would I do? And then go do it. And that is how your life changes. Ladies, today, I want to offer that you take that courageous action and you start acting from belief and watch your life change because it's going to happen. I love you ladies so much. If you believe it's possible for you to heal and to move forward, come join my coaching program. I will help you do it. I will help you do all of this so you don't have to do it by yourself. It's your turn to go forward. Let's go. I love you ladies so much and I'll talk to you guys next week on a brand new episode. So take care.